You ever see those clips from Russia where the wolves freeze to death in the middle of a storm? Not because they're weak, but because the cold hits so hard and so fast that even a wolf, an animal built for winter, just shuts down. You see deer collapsing in blizzards, birds frozen on branches overnight, even livestock turning into statues after one bad night outside. And these are modern animals living in a climate that's nothing compared to what the Ice Age threw at the world. That's what always gets me. If creatures today can die in a single night, how did Ice Age animals go to sleep in temperatures so low that stepping outside would have felt like walking into a freezer set on revenge mode? How did mammoths, cave lions, woolly rhinos, and all these giants actually rest without turning into ice sculptures by morning? When people talk about the Ice Age, they usually bring up glaciers and frozen landscapes stretching as far as the eye can see. But the real challenge wasn't the giant sheets of ice. It was the everyday climate and the places where animals actually lived. Winters held on for months, nights ran long, and the cold didn't rise and fall the way it does today. Once it settled in, it stayed locked in place. Wind moved across the open steppes with no real obstacles to slow it down, and even a steady breeze was enough to drain heat from a body that stopped moving for too long. Snow added another layer of discomfort, dense, dry, and often packed hard by the wind offering little warmth in return. Before any instincts or clever behavior kicked in, Ice Age animals depended on the insulation they carried on their bodies. In a climate where the cold didn't ease up at night, their fur and fat had to hold the line the moment they stopped moving. Most of the heavy hitters had a two-layer system. The outer coat was long, coarse, and built to take the punishment from wind and blowing snow. Woolly mammoths are the best example of this. Their guard hairs could reach over a meter long, creating a kind of moving shield around the body. Snow landed, stayed dry, and simply fell off. Woolly rhinos had a similar setup, with shaggy outer coats that stopped meltwater from forming. Because once water touched the skin in those temperatures, the heat loss was immediate. Underneath, the real insulation started. The underfrawn animals like step bison or muskox ancestors was packed incredibly tight almost like natural felt. Even predators carried impressive undercoats. Cave lions weren't built like the African lions we know today. Their winter coats were closer to modern cold climate cats, like the Amur tiger, thick around the torso, heavy along the neck, and dense enough to trap warm air right against the skin. Fat added a second layer of protection. Mammoths carried large fat deposits around the neck and shoulders, Step bison bulked up in the same areas, forming that characteristic winter hump that did more than store energy. It insulated the spine and protected the most temperature-sensitive parts of the body. Even carnivores like dire wolves put on seasonal fat because going into a freezing night with low reserves was one of the fastest ways to lose the battle against the cold. One of the simplest advantages Ice Age animals had came from something you can see immediately in their fossils. They were big. Large bodies lose heat much more slowly than small ones. It's basic physics. More mass means more stored warmth, and a slower surface area to volume ratio means the cold has fewer places to steal that heat from. Mammoths, woolly rhinos, and step bison all benefited from this. Their bodies were wide, heavily muscled, and wrapped around thick bones. A mammoth settling down for the night didn't cool at the same speed as a smaller animal. Even predators showed this advantage. Cave bears and short-faced bears carried tremendous bulk, and that mass slowed the rate at which their body temperature dropped once they stopped moving. The same pattern shows up in Ice Age canids. Dire wolves weren't enormous by herbivore standards, but compared to most modern wolves, they were heavier, broader in the chest, and built to hold onto heat more efficiently. It's easy to underestimate how important this was, a small animal cools quickly the moment it curls up. A large Ice Age mammal could afford to rest, breathe steadily, and let the night pass without its core temperature crashing. That slow rate of cooling was one of the most reliable defenses they had. And it's a big reason why so many Ice Age species evolved into heavy, compact, cold-resistant versions of what we see today. Even with thick coats and heavy bodies, Ice Age animals still had to sleep smart. The cold was relentless, and a bad sleeping spot could undo all the protection their bodies provided. So, they relied on simple, repeatable habits that reduced the heat loss without wasting extra energy. 
One of the most important choices was where they settled down. On the open steppe, even a small ridge or a cluster of shrubs made a difference. Turning their backs to the wind or lying in a slight depression in the ground helped block the airflow that pulled warmth from their fur. Modern musk oxen still use this trick, and their Ice Age relatives would have done the same. Positioning mattered too. Many animals curled tightly to reduce the surface area exposed to the cold. Wolves today still tuck their noses under their tails to warm the air they breathe, and Ice Age canids likely used the same tactic. Large herbivores couldn't curl up as tightly, but even shifting their legs closer to the body helped them hold on to heat. Group sleeping was another advantage. When animals rested close together, each body became a heat source for the others. For many Ice Age animals, the safest place to rest wasn't out on the open steppe at all. It was below the wind. The moment an animal got under the surface layer of air, the world changed. Temperatures were steadier, the wind couldn't reach them, and the cold didn't pull heat from their bodies as quickly. Caves were the most obvious shelter. Large animals like cave bears took full advantage of them, spending the coldest months inside chambers where the temperature stayed far more stable than the outside air. Even predators like cave hyenas used dens and rock shelters to get through harsh nights. But the real specialists were the smaller species. Burrows dug into the frozen ground or riverbanks created pockets of air that stayed warmer than the surrounding landscape. These burrows weren't complex, but they didn't need to be. A simple tunnel with a chamber at the end was enough to break the wind and hold on to a few precious degrees of heat. Snow offered its own kind of shelter. Under a thick drift, the temperature could be noticeably higher than above it. Some Ice Age mammals, especially rodents and other small species, built entire networks of tunnels under the snowpack. These subnivian spaces act as natural insulation, giving them a safe place to rest even during the worst conditions. Large animals didn't burrow, but they still used the landscape in similar ways. A mammoth settling near a snowbank or a bison bedding down against a ridge was choosing a sheltered spot with slightly better thermal conditions than the open plain. It wasn't the same as living underground, but it still reduced exposure to wind and cold. Even the best fur and the smartest instincts weren't enough on their own. Ice Age animals also depended on internal systems that kept their core temperature stable when the rest of the world was trying to drain it away. These adaptations weren't visible from the outside, but they played a major role in keeping animals alive through long, freezing nights. One of the most important tools was a vascular trick known as counter-current heat exchange. Instead of letting warm blood travel all the way to the limbs, and lose its heat in the cold. The blood vessels in the legs, tails, and sometimes even the face ran closely alongside the veins, bringing cold blood back. Warm blood gave up some of its heat before reaching the extremities, and that heat was transferred directly into the blood returning to the body. This meant the core stayed warm, while the outer parts of the body operated just above freezing. It sounds harsh, but it worked. Reindeer still use this system today, and Ice Age grazers like muskox ancestors, steppe bison, and early caribou species relied on it in the same way. Wolves and hyenas had versions of this setup that kept their paws functional on frozen ground without sacrificing core temperature. Another advantage was how these animals regulated their metabolic rate. When they were awake and moving, muscle actively generated heat. But even during rest, they could slow or redirect energy use to keep important organs warm. Larger species held their temperature more steadily, while smaller ones shifted into controlled states that saved heat, lowering unnecessary activity without slipping toward hypothermia. The respiratory system played a role too. Many Ice Age mammals had nasal passages adapted to cold air, warming each breath before it reached the lungs and preventing heat loss during exhalation. So whether it was a mammoth on the open steppe or a tiny rodent tucked under the snow, every Ice Age animal had its own way of dealing with the same silent threat. The days were tough, but the nights were the real test, and survival came down to how each species handled those hours when the cold had every advantage. And the more you look at it, the more you realize they weren't just surviving the Ice Age, they were shaped by it. Every layer of fur, every burrow entrance, every sleeping posture, every instinctive decision at sunset was part of a much bigger system built around staying warm long enough to see the next morning. It's easy to think of the Ice Age as a world of giants, but the real story 
is how every animal, big or small, found its own way through nights that never played fair. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.